In this video, we're going to go over the Dieckmann condensation reaction. And this reaction is basically an intramolecular Clayson condensation reaction. And so if you saw my video on the Clayson condensation reaction, this video is going to be a piece of cake. So the first thing that happens is we have a strong base, in this case ethoxide, and it's going to remove the alpha hydrogen. Now this particular molecule is symmetrical, so it really doesn't matter which of these two alpha hydrogens we remove. And so we're going to get the conjugate base, which is an enolate ion, adjacent to an ester. And then the carbon with the negative charge will attack the carbonyl carbon on the other side. And so we're going to get a six-membered ring. So whenever you have an intramolecular reaction where the molecule reacts with itself, typically a ring is formed. So let's call this carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Attached to carbon 1, we have an ester. Now, attached to carbon 6, we had a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen atom. But now we're going to have a single bond with the oxygen bearing a negative charge. And we still have the OET group. So now in the next step, the oxygen will use one of its lone pairs to reform a pi bond and kick out the ethoxide ion. And so our final product looks like this. But there's a few more things that we need to talk about. And so what we have is a beta keto ester. With respect to the ester, this is the alpha carbon and this is the beta carbon. So we have a ketone on a beta carbon. Notice that we have an alpha hydrogen here. And right now the solution is still basic. And for beta keto esters, the pKa of the alpha hydrogen is more acidic than the pKa of an ester. So for the beta keto ester, the pKa is about 11. And for a typical ester, like this, the pKa is 25. And so this hydrogen is highly acidic compared to this one. So it's going to be deprotonated by ethoxide. So under basic conditions, this is going to be our product. It's going to be in its deprotonated form. So to get this product, to make it stable, we need to acidify the solution. And so the carbon with the negative charge, let me use a different color, is going to grab a hydrogen. And so that's how we can get our final product. First, we need to produce this under basic conditions and then acidify the solution so that we can isolate this product. And so this is our beta keto ester. Now, once you have the final product of the Dieckmann condensation reaction, that is the beta keto ester, there's some other stuff that you can do with it. For instance, if you react it with H3O+, the ester functional group will be hydrolyzed into a carboxylic acid. And so we're going to get this product. Now, whenever you have a carboxylic acid that is two carbons away from a carbonyl group, such as a ketone, decarboxylation can occur if you heat it. So if you heat it, CO2 will be removed. And basically, you just got to take off this group. So you're going to lose this hydrogen, but this bond or this group will be replaced with hydrogen. Right now, there's one hydrogen here, but there's going to be two. So the end result after decarboxylation is you lose the carboxylic acid functional group, and then you just get a ketone. So now we have two hydrogens as opposed to one hydrogen. Now for the sake of practice, let's try another example. So here we have another molecule with two ester functional groups. 
but we also have a methyl group attached to it. So go ahead and predict the major product for this reaction. Now it turns out that for this reaction, you get a mixture of products. So if you want to pause the video and try this problem yourself, feel free to do so. Now because this molecule lacks symmetry, we can get two different products. And so we can remove two different alpha hydrogens. Let's call this hydrogen A and the other one hydrogen B. So let's begin by removing hydrogen B. So the ethoxide ion will take out this hydrogen, put in a negative charge on that carbon. And so here's the carbon with the negative charge. And then in the next step, it's going to attack the other carbonyl carbon, just like before. And now it's going to close and form a ring. So let's count it from the carbon with the negative charge to the carbonyl carbon that it attacks. So this time we're going to get a five-membered ring as opposed to the six-membered ring. And I'm going to make this carbon one so that I can put this ester functional group on the right side of this ring just to make it look nice. And I'm going to count it in a clockwise direction so that on carbon five on the top, I can have the oxygen with the negative charge and my OET group. Now, the methyl group is on carbon two for this example. And now the oxygen with the negative charge it's going to reform the pi bond and expel the ethoxide group. So now we have this. A beta keto ester with a methyl group on carbon 2. So now what is our next step? If you only want to draw the products, you can stop here, if that's your goal. However, if you want to show the complete mechanism, then because the solution is still basic, you need to remove the alpha hydrogen if you want to show the whole mechanism. And so now we have a carbon with a negative charge. And to get the product that we want, let's acidify the solution. And so now we have the product. Let's call this product B because it came from hydrogen B. Now let's go back to our original ester molecule. And this time, let's remove hydrogen A. So here's hydrogen A. And let's use ethoxide to take it off. And so the mechanism is going to be the same. So now we could use the carbanion, I mean not the carbanion, but this uh, enolate ion rather to attack the carbon with the oxygen, breaking the pi bond. And so this is going to be carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now this time, the methyl group is on carbon 3 as opposed to carbon 2. And so our products will be slightly different. The only difference is the position of the methyl group. So just like before, this is going to be carbon 1. As you can see, carbon-1 is the carbon with the negative charge. And it's attached to the ester group, which we have here. And so this is going to be 2, 3, 4, 5. So the methyl is on 3. And on 5, we're going to have the oxygen with the negative charge and the OET group. And then we're going to kick out the ethoxide group. And so we're going to get this product. In this case, I'm not going to do the complete mechanism. I'm just going to draw product A. 
So let's draw both products next to each other. So for product A, the methyl group is on carbon 3, if you count it from the ester, or if you count it in this way, I guess you could say carbon 4. So that's product A. And product B was this one where the methyl group was one carbon away from the ester. So as you can see, we get two different beta diketo, I mean beta keto esters, if we use the Diekmann condensation on a molecule with two ester functional groups, and if that molecule is unsymmetrical. Now, if we add H3O plus, we're going to get two different carboxylic acid molecules. So we can get these two products. And then, if we heat it, decarboxylation will occur. And so the carboxylic acid functional groups will be removed if we heat it. So notice that these two products are now identical. So after decarboxylation, we only get one product in this reaction.